Okay, so I've always talked about how it would be like back in the day when the new laws were passed, like how the mask mandates were and the restrictions and all the people got all pissed off. I used to always think, man, I wonder what people would say back in the day when new laws were passed. And lo and behold, I find this clip of people being pissed off about having to wear a seatbelt. Yeah, all right, check this out. Before the new law came into force, only about four out of every ten motorists regularly used a seatbelt. Wow, four out of ten and During this morning's the morning rush hour in London, the vast majority of drivers and front seat passengers were securely fastened. It seems the fear of prosecution was a greater incentive to belt up. Yeah, when your money's on, on the line, campaigns, you with their appeals to some what get in line. The government will now be hoping for a big reduction in the number of people killed or seriously injured in traffic accidents. Good morning. I see you're wearing your seatbelt today. That's correct. Yes. Is this simply only because I have to? Indeed, I never worn it before. Um, I prefer to be free when I'm driving, but um, I'm aware that the law won't make enforce things today, so that's why I'm wearing it. But not everyone remembered the need to clunk. Not everyone. This Hello, can I ask you why you're not wearing a seatbelt? <laughs> you realise you're breaking the law? Yeah, I do realise now, yeah. Thanks for telling me. I better put it over. I think you had. <laughs> so it just goes to show that no matter what, I just think adults don't like being told what to do. It doesn't matter what it is, if it's for their benefit, they just don't like being told what to do. What are the chances of being fined if you don't wear a seatbelt? Well, at the moment, it depends very much on where you live. Some police forces have said that they intend to adopt a lenient attitude for the first few weeks at least. People who break the law are likely to escape with just a warning. Just a In warning. In other areas, the police are saying that they intend to prosecute people as from today. And if you don't... So why should it matter if the law is a law? If you obey one because you believe in it, doesn't mean that you get to not do it because you don't believe in it it's wear a seat belt that could mean a fine of up to 50 pounds well the merseyside chief constable kenneth oxford has already said that in his area drivers to begin with uh, not wearing seat belts will be warned and not prosecuted so john thorne has been examining how the softly softly approach there has been working at the dawn of this new legislation rush hour motorists on merseyside were greeted by foul snow-filled winds there was no sign of extra police vigilance on the roads leading to the Mersey Tunnel, and many drivers had forgotten to lock on their seat belts. In fact, one driver was deliberately ignoring the new legislation. Well, figures have proved in the continents that uh, even though the number of people wearing seat belts went up, there's no decrease in the amount of accidents. So even though you're liable to... The man said that was no decrease in accidents when wearing a seat belt. He's just a little bit confused. Wearing a seatbelt doesn't magically stop people from having vehicle accidents. It prevents them from, you know, maybe going through the windshield and dying. 50 pound fine. Yeah. You're not going to wear them. No. The Merseyside police have been coy about their attitude. The chief constable, Mr. Kenneth Oxford, declined an interview. So did his traffic department commander. But in fact, motorists here have a good reputation for belting up. A local survey suggested that nearly half Merseyside drivers did it automatically even before the new law. The police force here on Merseyside are not alone in deciding initially to advise motorists about the new seatbelt legislation. I mean, and all they're asking you is to wear a seatbelt for your safety. I mean, it's pretty, pretty, pretty clear that I don't believe it's for anything other than that. But for some reason, they're just appalled that you have to wear a seatbelt rather than prosecuting them immediately but their chief constable's stance has been attacked by the british safety council who describe it as entirely irresponsible amounting to a license for suicide i mean it is i believe that it is it's necessary you gotta wear your seatbelt and you get in an accident i mean there are cases where it's hurt but more than not you know it's a good idea but people will complain about anything huh i mean even people complaining about say 
Wow. Any attempt to restrict like, drinking and driving guy, here this, is viewed by some is as enough. downright undemocratic. This guy Listen getting common this when a fella can't put in a hard day's work, put in 11, 12 hours a day, and then get in your truck and at least drink one or two beers. So you're a commie if you don't want people drinking and driving. It's their right to be able to drink a beer after a hard day's work and then drive home. Then you just wait. Just wait and get home. Then drink all you want. They're making it laws where you can't drink when you want to. You can't drink when you want to. I just can't pound alcohol with my newborn infant in the car with me. I don't understand what would happen. You, can't, you have to wear a seatbelt when you drive. See, then you have to wear a seatbelt. How dare them? Pretty soon we're going to be a communist country. Pretty soon we're going to be a communist country. No, it's amazing what people, like the line that they will, the comparison. <laughs> because they don't want you drinking and driving, <laughs> we're commies. I mean, and it's not just our country. I mean, it's it's other countries. I check these people up from the 60s. When they find out that Wilderness they got to get a breathalyzer. In. Test in Britain by two days. On Friday night, we took regulation breathalyzers supplied by the Home Office to the Green Dragon at Shenfield, a typical motorist pub in Essex. Statistics show that in Britain last year, drink played a part in 13,000 fatal or serious accidents. 13,000 fatal accidents or serious injuries because people were drinking and driving but are in, appalled that they got a they got to blow they got to get a breathalyzer test if they get pulled over and suspected of drinking and driving breathalyzer tests have been introduced in an effort to reduce that number i think it's fairly diabolical because uh, it doesn't take any account for example of the uh, pedestrian who's had too much to drink he could cause an accident but the pedestrian you're worried about a pedestrian causing accidents yes it might happen but you're comparing drunk drivers walking around to, to, to the thing that people come up with to make their logic make sense to them is just astounding he doesn't get tested it's the driver who gets tested and i think that's unfair yeah because you can go a hundred miles an hour in a car you can't Go 100 miles an hour fucking walking or even running. This guy's stupid. What do you think are your chances of getting away with it if you've had one over the eight? Well, it's not one over the eight. One over the green crystal, perhaps. I, I think very good. I think because I, I, I will drive no differently than I do now, and, I, and it's never attracted police attention up to now. It affects the way you think. It has to affect the way you drive. It's got just people. But the questions being asked about the tests are, are they accurate? Have the police the men and the means to enforce the law? And will they be effective as a deterrent? Let's <laughs> see how drunk this, this dude is. Before you no, drive. Not. One big blow. Like a whoopee cushion. Right up. Wonder how much he okay, is. How, drunk he is. how many drinks have you had tonight? Three pints. Three, Three pints. pints. See how drunk he is. Well, look, I'm afraid you're not sober anymore. No. Are you driving home tonight? Yes. Well, on Monday night, that'll be. Are you driving home? Well. Do you think you'll still drive home on Monday night? Well, no, not if, not, if, not if that's like it. Well, three pints isn't much, is it? It isn't very much, no. But do you think you're still, you know, perfectly capable of driving? Quite capable, yes. You don't sound very capable. Well, I quite know. Well, I. I just I don't know be. the reason why you would drink and then to drive, drive. I don't... You can't defy the law. It's the law of the land now. Ah, oh, that may be. It may be the law of the land, but of I, I, I can tell that I'm a fit and proper fit. Of course. I only follow laws that I want to, because most people are hypocrites. They'll point out things that other people do that reason why laws are in effect, but as soon as you don't believe in it, it's now it doesn't apply to you. ...person to drive a motor car. Barbara Castle says that the only rule is to not drink at all. Now, you're saying that you can. Why should you be so special? Well, what does she know about it anyway? Well, do you know that you're capable of driving? I'm convinced that I'm capable of driving. I've done this for 
done this for years now. I've been drinking and driven for years. It's never affected me. I, I can't believe these people. I don't see what I am. As I say, for many, many years, I've drove with far more looking at me than I have now. Because that's a good that's a good defense. I've driven drunker before, so it should be all right now. And I've driven in Kenya, Uganda, down in South Africa. <laughs> I've driven and drunk all and these times. And I, I still feel that I am capable of driving this car home. So you're going to drive home tonight, and you're not going to change your drinking habits at all? Certainly not. All right, let's have a look. Let's see with this guy. You're drunk. You're not capable of driving. <laughs> now, what are you going to do about it? Well, quite honestly, I don't feel drunk. I mean, this is the, this is the point. But this is the law of the land. Yes, you I'm cannot do drink and this. drive anymore over this limit. I see. Oh, well. Okay. <laughs> All right. But will you do this when the law becomes in force on Monday? Well, I wonder whether they'll sort of pick on the people like myself. But you're drunk. Oh, oh God. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Well, tell me what you think about this law. Well, I don't think it's... Um, well, no, basically, I, it's probably a, 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 a quite a good law because... Uh, of course it's a good law. People will not die from drinking and driving. Ah. Uh, you know, anything to prevent accidents on the road, I can't agree with. But um, it obviously, um, it, you know, it's, it's different with p different people. And some people get drunk on a, um, a small gin. Other people take um, 15 pints before they get drunk. But it's aimed at... It's not about how much you drink. It's how much blood alcohol, how much is in your system. Like, ordinary people like you and me not alcoholics yes they, well this is trouble i mean uh, what can i say i'm drunk well if that's just law in uh, it, uh, what else can it be it's fair but uh, normally next week i wouldn't go to that extent i've had four pints so i should keep down to three pints fair enough do you think you really will keep to three pints yes i can manage on that i can enjoy my evening on three pints of beer drunken drivers should be off the road but when they can convince me that passing that test, such as you've done now, that you're drunk and not fit to drive a car, I think it's a lot of cock. You so what what test should they give to determine if you've had too much to drink? Because apparently people aren't capable of self-regulating. So what test should it be? Could drive a coach and horses through the present act. Why do you reckon you can do that? because you can go in and refuse to take the blood test. The breathalyzer is not the ultimate, the ultimate conviction. You can go through and take a blood, uh, you can go and- And that's why they've gotten to suspending your license for refusing to do it as a deterrent from you doing and saying no. The station, the last for blood test, you refuse that, you take a urine test, they wait an hour, they have to throw the first sample away, you wait another hour, then you refuse to take the urine sample and say you'll take the blood test. You take the blood test, then, your blood alcohol will have dropped by at least 30 or 40, whatever it happens to be, I forget, milligrams or something. You seem very well informed on the law, so you're going to carry on well, drinking I've, as before, are you? Yes, I've read the act. and uh... So because I believe I know the law, I can still drink and drink. I just don't get it, man. I don't understand people's logic for wanting, arguing to want to drink and drive. I, I've made sure in advance that I know exactly what I'm in for anyway. I, what's your job? I'm a law student. Of course he's a law student. Law. <sighs> argue, he didn't even argue that well. Like you should probably get your money back if you're going to law school and that was your defense to not wanting to, uh, having laws against drinking and driving. But I shall take notice of it because I don't want to lose my license for a year. Or as, as the case that's, might be. That's why penalties are severe, so that people go with it. Be uh, whatever the penalty is. What do you think your chances of getting away with it are? Well, <laughs> I don't think they bring laws in that you can get away with anything today. I mean, 70 mile an hour limit, and I think... You can only drive 70 miles an hour. I gotta get breathalyzers. I can't be all wasted on the road. What kind of world is this coming to? Basically, is what he's saying. As far as I'm concerned, Mrs. Castle wants to drive people off the road. Get my keys, man. Yeah, so I, I could just, I could see it now. These people would be saying the same things, and then the people about their mask and the mandates and all that because of the the virus, um, like how it's 
their right not to have to wear a mask and blah, 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 and all that stuff. And I always thought, man, people probably were up in arms about uh, they have to wear a seatbelt. I thought they were just going to trip about that. Like, and listen to people's two cents on whether or not they should wear a seatbelt or not. But there's actually people in this country and out of this country who argued against acts to help regulate drunk driving. It's just, and the, the, the excuses they gave why you should be able to drink and not have to obey by these laws is just astounding. But I wonder what, what freedoms they're going to take from you next and how bad it's going to be. Thank <laughs> you.